it's my honor to speak about this clinical features and the uh, staging of corridor melanoma here in this uh, meeting. Um, so I want to emphasize again, uvea melanoma is the most common uh, primary intraocular malignancy in adults. Uh, it is also found in Asians. It's a rare tumor in Asians, but the mortality rate is relatively high for the uvea melanoma. You can see that um, the uh, incidence in the USA is about 5 per cases per million population and in Asia is about 0 0.3. But we also share some similarities because it is also more common in males, in Asians, and the, um, some differences are the uh, age of diagnosis. In Caucasian, the mean age at the diagnosis is about 55 years old, and in Asian, it's about 10 years younger, about 45 uh, years old. And then um, the five-year survival rate is also different. From the um, reports from the Eurocare, it's about 68%, and in the United States and in Asia, it's about 85%. First, I would like to, you may know the, uh, the AJCC classification for both the iris melanoma and also the uh, choroidal melanoma, but I want to say it is in a standard way to describe the staging of the tumor. So I have to spend some time to talk about this classification. Uh, because iris melanoma is relatively rare and, and it accounts for about 5 to 10% of the uvea melanoma. So in this picture, you can see uh, a case came in with decreased vision for about six months. And um, she had cataract surgery three years ago. And you may appreciate the uh, diffuse uh, hyperpigmented lesion. And also, you can see nodules at the um, superior uh, temporal part of the left eye. And also pigment in, on the uh, intraocular lens with uncontrolled uh, intraocular pressure up to 30 millimeter mercury. So in this uh, classification, we um, would say the uh, tumor is a T2A tumor because the tumor involves the ciliary body and with increased IOP. So let me mention about the T1 tumors are limited to the iris. T2 tumors uh, involve the ciliary body and choroid above. And the T3 tumors involve ciliary body choroid and with extra to the sclera and the T4 tumors have extra extent, uh, sclera extension. So we do not have to memorize it, but just keep in mind when you see the patients, you can uh, make a, a better kind of, uh, classification. Yeah. And uh, for the uh, posterior part of the uh, uvea, we have the uh, choroidal and ciliary body melanoma. Um, most of the patients came in with decreased vision. And also, as Dr. Guto mentioned about the diagnostic delays in about half of the patients, I think one of the um, reasons are the anterior located um, tumors or the diffuse type of the um, choroidal melanoma. And the, um, most of the tumors are pigmented. And in some cases, the tumors are likely pigmented or what we call the melanotic melanoma. And um, the uh, tumor configuration could be a dome shape, a mushroom shape, or the diffuse type. And uh, there are some risk factors for uh, the uvea melanoma, such as the um, ratio factors, the sun exposure, and also the pre-existing uh, nevus. Um, it is, in my practice, I always see that medium or large size of um, uvea melanoma, it's important to look at the, um, to find the small melanoma as suggested by Dr. Shields. Uh, this is an anterior located um, uvea melanoma, so you can see it is quite a large tumor, and we need, sometimes we need other uh, examinations such as the uh, MRI or CT scan to see the, uh, the extent of the tumor. As you can see, the uh, ciliary body is not involved in this case. And uh, also, I would like to mention about some of the uh, differential diagnosis of the pigmented lesion, especially in the Asians. But I think the most important one is the uh, AMD, and uh, also the metastatic tumor when you see a 
likely prevented lesion. Yeah. And also, um, this is one of the most co uh, commonly used the classification for the uveal melanoma, the comb study. And it is quite simple because it is uh, classified as small, medium, and large. But you, as you can see, the tumor size is increasing, the uh, survival rate is decreasing. And also, this is a little bit complicated by the AJCC. It also described the tumor size from T1 to T4, but you have to know that, notice that it also described the, uh, if the tumors are growing to the ciliary body or without ciliary body, T, T, T2, uh, T, the B tumors. Uh, with uh, ciliary body involvement, but without ex um, extra uh, extension and C tumors without ciliary body involvement and uh, with extra extension of the uh, ocular. So, and also to up to T4, T, uh, T4 tumors is any size with a metastatic uh, tumor larger than five millimeters. Yeah. So, and also the, the AJCC talk about the nodes in involvement with regional nodes involvement. N1 is spread, has spread to the nearby lymph nodes and M, M1A, M1B, and M1C according to the size of the um, metastasis. So, it looks quite complicated, but if we can uh, look, look at it, this slide, we can summarize as the uh, stage one, stage two, stage three, and up to stage four. The uh, important message is here is yeah, with every increased stage, there are three folds of increased mortality uh, rate. So always, we have to keep in this. It, it's, um, you can put this like in your ultrasound rooms, so you can always, check with the uh, uh, size of the tumor and the extent of the tumor and see if the, the tumor is uh, growing into the ciliary bodies. We, we do not have to memorize it, but just keep in mind that we uh, measure the um, tumor size and keep the stage uh, well. And then uh, this is a diffuse type of um, uveal melanoma. And when we do the ultrasound, it's about 14 times three. And this is another one, the posterior located tumor is about six to five to six in thickness and about 10 in basal diameter. So it is a T2, these are T2A tumors. And also, and this is, I think this is the most commonly seen in uveal melanoma in Asians, is posterior located and then we do the ultrasound, it's about 6 times 12, and it is also a T2A tumors. And then, this is another anterior located tumor. You can see that it is quite a thick tumor, and it's about 9 in thickness, and then it, will, it is a T3A, it's 14 times 12 times 9. Yeah, both by ultrasound and also by the CT scans. I will skip this because uh, another speaker will speak about this. Uh, I would like to thank, thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much. So we have one minute for questions. Does anyone in the audience have a question? Okay, so I'd like to pose a question. You were talking about the AJCC classification and you referred to, I guess, the seventh edition. A yes. new edition has come out now, it's the eighth edition. But I'd like to ask our colleagues from Boston, maybe Dr. Ken or Dr. Bogutis, in your practice, your daily practice with uveal melanoma, do you use the AJCC classification and why or why not? Maybe one of you can answer just briefly. Well, I was hoping that uh, Dr. Kim would answer this question. She pushed me uh, the microphone. I don't use it. Uh, I don't see you know, the point of it. Uh, I think that uh, uh, if we are going to make any kind of change regarding management, uh, I would uh, be inclined not to use it. Uh, regarding the prognosis also, you know, we have so many 
have a test, for example, one of the genetics tests. So, you know, if uh, you do this, by far you are much better than any other classification. So, it's not bad, it's good to have it, but uh, for the clinical practice and, you know, to uh, kind of get uh, the results, I think that uh, they, there are quite a lot of limitations. Okay, so thank you. And thanks for explaining that to us, the classification. Now, when you publish uh, any major series on uveal melanoma, you have to classify according to the AJCCs, uh, Dr. Chow has mentioned. So it's not easy to remember it. And as she said, keep it posted in your ultrasound room because you won't remember the nuances. Okay, thank you.